Hi everyone, today we are already working with lecture 1 in econometrics. Today we will already go through the main measures of central tendency measures and measure of dispersions as an introduction for econometrics. Central tendency measures mainly concerned about mean, median, mode, and geometric mean. In case of mean or arithmetic mean, it is the most widely measure of location and it has some characteristics like all values are used in calculation, it is unique. The sum of deviation from the mean is zero. It is calculated by summing the values and dividing by the number of values or observations. For population mean, it could be already calculated as in the formula mu, which represent population mean, equal sum of x, where sum or sigma represent the summation of all values for the variable, in this case this is x, over the number of population. This is an example of the population mean where we have 12 automobile manufacturing companies in the United States we can see that these are all companies working in this industry, so we call this as population. If you find the sum of patent granted for all of them and divided over their number 12, we can find the number will be 195, which means the mean of population here is 195 patent granted for each company. In case that we don't have all information about population, we could work with the sample. In this case, the sample is x bar, and we're using the same formula, sigma n, sigma x, divided by n, small n, number of population in the sample. Here we have an example of this. Suncom, this is the name of the company, is studying the number of minutes used monthly by clients in a particular cell phone rate plan. And a random sample of 12 clients showed the following number of minutes used last month. As we can see, x bar, or the mean in this case, is the sum of all of them divided by the number of observation, and it is 97.5%, which means that the minutes, average minutes used in this sample is 97.5 per month. Properties of arithmetic mean could be summarized as following. Every set of interval level and ratio level data has a mean. All the values are included in computing the mean. A set of data has a unique mean. The mean is affected by either large or sum or small data values. The arithmetic mean is the only measure of central tendency where the sum of the deviation of each value from the zero is from the mean is zero. We could use what we call weighted mean. In this case, we give weights w's for each value as long as this is repeated, and we divide this by the sum of weights. So, x part w could be calculated like w1x1 plus w2x2 to wnxn divided by w1 plus w2 until wn. Here we have an example of this. 
The Qatar construction company pays its hourly employees $16.5, $19, or $25 per hour. There are 26 hourly employees, 14 of which are paid at 16.5 rate, 10 at 19, and 2 at 25 rate. What is the mean hourly rate paid the 26 employees? Here we can see that we should multiply each value from the 3 value by the weights which means how many times repeated. At the end we can see that the average is $18.11. We have another measure. We call this is median. Median is the midpoint of the values after they have been ordered from the smallest to the largest. There there are as many values above the median as below, which means the median divided data in the sample or observation in the sample into two equal small samples, and the point in the middle, which represents the location of the mean, is exactly the mean. For mean, we have some properties we can summarize in these points. There is a unique median for each dataset. It is not affected by extremely large or small values because we're looking for location. So it will not suffer from things suffered in case of mean. It can be computed for ritual level, interval level, or ordinal level data. It can be computed for an open-ended frequency distribution if the median does not lie in an open-ended class. Let's have an example of this. The age for sample of five college students are 21, 25, 19, 20, 22. After rearranging, we can see that we start with 19 and ended up with 25. The middle point is number 3. In this location, we can see that the value 21. So 21 in this case is the median. Another example. Heights of 4 basketball players in inches 76, 73, 80, 75. After the arrange, we can find that we have four values that start from 73 and end up with 80. The middle location contains two values, 75 and 76. So median should be between them. After summing them and divide by 2 to find the middle point, we can find that the median is 75.5. Mood is the third measure here and is the value of observation that appears most frequently. In this case, the most frequently one is Lamour because it exceeds 300 and approaching 400 times. An example of this for annual salaries as given in this example, we can see that the most repeated salary is 60. If we count, we can see that this is repeated 6 times out of 15. For geometric mean, it is useful for average change of percentage ratios, growth rate, and so on. It has a wide application. In business, 
economics and other disciplines geometric mean will always be less than or equal to arithmetic mean geometric mean of set of n positive number is defined as the nth root of the product of n values and could be calculated as following if you have n different values of the variable x multiply all of them together by each other and find the root of them for order n here we have an example of this in the first example we suppose that we receive 5% increase in salary this year and a 15% increase next year the average annual percentage increase is 9.88 not 10% to understand this we should apply the following formula first it will be 1.05 because the gross is 5% only multiplied by the second 1.15 because the gross in the second one is 15% after getting the square root it is 1.098 if we exclude 1 and multiply the remaining by 10% by 100% so this is finally 9.8%. The second example, the return on investment earned by Atkins Construction Company for four successive years was 30% to 20% minus 40% and 200%. What is the geometric mean rate of return on investment? We can see that we multiply the first 1.3, 1.2, is 0.6 because this is negative growth. So 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6 times 3 because this is 1 plus 2. After getting the fourth root, it is 1.29 so that it is 29%. For general central tendency measures, we can find dispersion measures because these measures represent how sure we are about the measures of central tendency. We have some simple measures like range and mean deviation and also we have more accurate things like variance and the standard deviation but the question is why we study dispersion this a measure of location which has the mean or the median only describe the center of the data it is valuable for the standpoint but it doesn't tell us anything about the spread of the data. Here we have an example of this. If your nature guy told you that the river ahead average 3 feet in depth, would you want to wade across on foot without additional formation? Probably not. You would want to know something about the variation in the depths. A second reason for studying the dispersion in a set of data is to compare the spread in two or more distributions. Here, we can see that how can we find the values for all of these four measures. Range. The easiest one. This is just the difference between largest and the smallest value. Mean deviation. Deviation is the difference between the variable value x 
and the mean x bar and we should take absolute values and after this getting the sum and divide by n we are using the absolute values because the sum of deviation around the mean equals zero but this is maybe not the accurate measure so we could use variance here we have another technique instead of cancelling the sign by using absolute values we will use a square so that variance or sigma square is sum of x minus mu in case of population to the power 2 to cancel the sign divide by capital N the size of population in this case we can find the standard deviation of population and we just take the square root in this case here there is an example the number of cappuccinos sold at the Starbucks location in the Orange County airport between 4 and 7 p.m. for example in this case for a sample of five days last year were 20, 40, 50, 60 and 80 determine the range for the number of cappuccinos this is very easy the largest is 80 the smallest is 20 so that range is a difference is 60 for the same example if you're looking to find the mean deviation we can do this as following first we write down values after this getting the average if we sum all of these values 20 and 40 is 60 plus 50 is 110 plus 60 this is 170 plus 80 250 divided by 5 so the average is 50 if we getting the difference between each value and mean 20 minus 50 is negative 30 40 minus 50 is negative 10 50 minus 50 is 0 60 minus 50 is 10 80 minus 50 is 30 the sum of this is already zero to cancel the sign to solve this problem we have 30 10 0 10 and 30 sum is 80 if we divide this 80 over 5 the number of observation so the mean deviation is 16 here we have another example the number of traffic citations issued during the last five months in Beaufort County, South California is 38, 26, 13, 41, and 22. What is the population variance? Here we mentioned population, so these represent population. We write down the values in x colon the sum of them is 140 so that the mean is 140 over 5 this is 28 we find the difference between the value and the mean this is positive 10 negative 2 negative 15 plus 13 negative 6 respectively the sum of them is 0 as we know if we take the square this will become 100, 4, 225, 169, 36, the sum is 534. Divide this by number of observations, 5, so the variance in this case is 106.8. In case that we are working with a sample, in this example we have the sample. In case of sample, we are using S instead of sigma. 
and we divide by n minus 1 to get unpiced values. Here in this example, the hourly wages for a sample of part-time employees at home depot are 12, 20, 16, 18, and 19. And we're looking to determine the variance in this case. Here we should write it consequently in the hourly wage or x colon from 12 to 19. The sum is 85. 85 over 5. This is 17. The mean. So, x minus x bar for the case of 12 is 12 minus 17, it is negative 5. 20 minus 17 is 3. 16 minus 17, negative 1. 18 and 19 minus 17, this will be 1 and 2 respectively. The sum is 0 as expected. By getting a square, we have 21, 9, 1, 1 and 4. The sum is 40. So if we divide 40 over n minus 1, which means 5 minus 1, it will be 10. 10 is a sample variance. This is the end of this lecture. Thank you.